All right, on today's episode, uh, we got a couple of big block cams uh, sent in for repair. And this one, I don't know if it broke the link bar or if it killed. I don't know what it done. But this is an intake and this is an exhaust on the same cylinder. And then this is an intake on the next cylinder. And the lifter got into it a little bit, but it, it rolled the edge of this lobe over. So we're going to TIG that up, and the rest of it doesn't look deep enough that I think just the regrind is going to take care of it. We're not going to have to weld any other lobes, but we're going to have to weld the corner of this lobe up. So I'm going to get it uh, cleaned up and ground, and then uh, we'll go over what we use and how we do it. So on this, uh, on these induction hardened cores, and even on the uh, 8620 stuff, I don't use it on tool steel. But uh, we got a we got a TIG rod. It's uh, it's 86. Hold on here. It's 6150. So after it's welded, without doing anything, it has. Uh, like 56 to 58 Rockwell. So it's, it's already hard. And I've tigged a, a lot of uh, 5150 and 5160 cores. And you can't, even the color match is good. You can't even, once it's, it's ground, you, you can't even see where the repair was made. So, and I feel pretty confident, I don't know because this is a comp, I think. Yeah, this is a comp, so it's probably an EPC core. So I don't know what the material is, but if I was a betting man, I'd say it's going to be a 5150 core is what it looks like. So, um, all right, let's get, to, let's get this thing welded up so we can grind it. Get a little bit more over here on this side. So that should be plenty there. And I'm looking at this little ugly spot and I almost believe I'm on. I'm going to give it a little attention. Yeah, I think I'm going to weld that up too while, we, while we're here. Yeah, it's a, it ain't real bad, but I'm going to go ahead and get it while we're doing. Beside it. Yeah, so, so we. 
we just run that edge right there where it's kind of rolled over and then it had a little, little ugly spot right there in the middle. Well, that's uh, Why not? Yep. I was just gonna weld one and I welded three. That's all right though. So, so basically that's how we do it. Uh, if you know a lot of them's not hurt bad enough to where we don't we don't actually have to grind you know weld it. We can just regrind it. But <clears throat> you know this one was a little a little extra more than normal. But you'll see them like right here. I'll get my glasses on like you can see right here right up the flank this is usually where you see damage and uh, a lot of times that's from you know people not staying up on their lash <clears throat> and the lash gets excessive and once the lash gets excessive it gets into a uh, you know like it comes on on a on a spot that's a lot more acceleration than it should have and you'll get you'll get this uh, indention on the open inside flank. You can see it on this one a little bit. So that's one reason it's, it's kind of, there's another lobe that's a little ugly, but I mean, again, you know, just a regrind will fix that. But, but you know, that's why it's important to keep up on your lash. All right, so, uh, that's that. I'm gonna get it in the grinder, get it set up, and uh, we'll get this thing ground, and I'll show you what it looks like when we get done. All right, so we come in here and stuck it back in the grinder, and it was it was like this to start with. Uh, it's it's bent. The cam's bent ten thousandths roughly. So we're gonna we got to get it straight before we can do anything with it. So. I always, because generally these will be sometimes bent too. It ain't, it ain't always just bent in the middle. <clears throat> so 
I'll start with the center journal and get it straight. And then once I get it straight, we'll do this one and this one and then move back to the center one because, you know, moving these is going to move the center. And, you know, but we can usually get it within a thousandth, sometimes less. But um, so there's our low spot right there. So, and it's counterintuitive, but we go and hit it on the low spot because we're expanding the metal. We're painting it, so we're expanding the metal on the low side, and that, that pushes it the opposite way. So, right there is about the center of the low spot. So, that brought it down to like seven ish. That's like six. That's like five. And that's like three. That's like one, one-ish. Uh, you see that? Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll come over here. Look at our, and then we'll come back here. Yeah, that one's a little janky. So that is three. So it still ain't real bad considering, cause this is where the damage happens. So, you know, that, that sort of goes. So that's like two-ish. That's like one and a half. And that's less than one. Go back to our center journal and you can see it's moved some. So, <clears throat> I mean, it still ain't bad, but it, it has moved some. So we'll find the center of our low spot Right there, we'll roll her over. Bingo. We'll check all three journals one more time. Make sure we are under one. Yep. So all three are under one. So we can now, now we'll, we'll rough it in and then we'll check straightness one more time. Cause sometimes as you remove metal this happens in just standard machining as you remove metal you relieve stress and then that makes the shaft go out around so we'll rub it in we'll confirm straightness if it needs touching we'll touch it up then we'll make our final grind or finish grind <clears throat> we'll check it one more time confirm that it's straight if it's not we'll bump it a little bit and then and then it's done so um I think we'll call that a video and then uh, when we start grinding it, we, we may do another video, but I'll, uh, I'll definitely do a video and show you when we, when we get these ugly loads uh, ground and let you see what that looks like as a finish. <clears throat> All right, so I got it swept in and then uh so you know we welded this one this one and this one and this is the one we welded all the way over it and i just i just ground it and i figured this was going to be the worst one so i used this one to set the heel to toe dimension so uh, I, i'll do this one on camera and let you see it what it looks like but like i say i mean you you can't even tell where it was ever anything was done to it
and you can see, so it's, I mean, like I say, and you can't even see where it was welded. And we got just a little bump on the side, so we'll go in there and clean that up with a grinder uh, and get that slick. But like I say, when it's done, you won't even be able to tell anything that's ever happened to it. So, uh, but sometimes, so sometimes it's economical to, to do all of this to a cam, and sometimes it's not. So if you got a, you know, a $350 hydraulic roller this is probably not an economical solution but if you've got a you know a 450 or a 500 dollar solid roller big block then you know or some exotic small block four seven swap 900 base circle you know something like that you know then this is probably an option because you know shop rates what is it 125 an hour so if we got to spend you know 45 minutes welding and then our standard regrind fee is 170 so you know you just you just gotta gotta weigh it out but uh but like i say uh, the moral of the story is we can fix some of this stuff and you know and, and other places can fix it too not just me so just be aware that just because you hurt a load you know it ain't always garbage um so hopefully that was helpful and entertaining, and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, don't forget the camshaft giveaway. Uh, I'll link that video in the description, and all you got to do is mash that like button. Thanks so much. We'll see you on the next one.